We just need a vaccine. Then things would be so much better. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. We have vaccines, yay. But that is just the first hurdle. First of all, kudos to the drug companies who've done what normally takes years, if not decades to do in the span of a few months. But a vaccine isn't a magic bullet. Here are just some of the obstacles we're facing now that we've got a working vaccine. First of all, production. Creating 7.5 billion vaccines times two. So that's 15 billion doses because most of the front runners come in double doses. And that includes the special vials they go in, the needles, the rubber stoppers, and more. Then there's transportation. 8,000 cargo planes. That's how much Ayara estimates it will take to airlift vaccines to every single person in the world. But wait, there's more. Storage. The vaccine front runners must be kept at frozen temperatures as low as minus 70 degrees Celsius or 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So imagine those 8,000 cargo planes carrying billions of vaccine doses, then they have to be offloaded and put into cool storage trucks or ships to be shipped to get to the farthest corners of the world. And they have to stay frozen. It's a little bit hard to let it go. Then there's also the back dealing politics of who gets the vaccine first. The world situation right now isn't exactly where people who are the most high risk or vulnerable will get the vaccine first, like healthcare workers or the elderly. Developed nations largely have deals with the pharmaceutical companies who created the vaccines, so they are at the front of the line to get them. But less developed nations don't, so they're far away at the back of the line to get the vaccines. Vaccine nationalism at its finest. Then there's the people who don't want to get the vaccine at all. Polls in the US and seven EU countries in September found that only about half the people surveyed said they were likely to get a COVID vaccine if it were available. And herd immunity comes when enough people in a community have gotten a vaccine and are thus immune. For COVID, the percentage is estimated to range between 55 to 82%. And we don't yet fully understand how long COVID antibodies last and how immunity works as people have been reinfected. Did a previous hot take on that, check it out. Answering those questions will tell us how much longer face masks, social distancing, contact tracing, and mass testing will be needed to fight the pandemic, even though vaccines are available. That's the hot take. Thanks for listening.